I'm going to kind of uh, springboard off of something that we, we ended last week with, and that is in Revelations 12, 12, where it talks about the, the devil's time is short, okay? And his time is, is short compared to what he knows. It, yeah, it is. But there's an issue I want us to look at today is the devil's time is short, but your time is probably shorter, Amen. okay? And so we're going to look at uh, some perspectives of time today. And uh, so in, uh, we're going to look at, start with James chapter 4. James chapter 4. In verse 13 it says, Come now you who say today or tomorrow uh, we'll go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business, make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You're just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we'll live and, uh, and uh, do this and that. But as it is, you, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, the one who knows uh, the right thing to do and doesn't do it, uh, to him it's sin. Now, there's a couple things in this, and that is, number one, our life is a vapor. Uh, when you're... Uh, Young, it seems like you've got all this time ahead of you. Then you wake up one morning and you say, where has all the time gone? And um, life is relatively short in the eternal scheme of things. And many times we find ourselves uh, boasting about what we're going to do rather than saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? And I want to encourage you to look at yourself and say, do I live life my way, or do I say, Lord, help me to live my life what you would have me do? And um, is, is, is his will a priority? Now, I've heard a lot of preachers over the years say uh, that if you knew for a fact that Jesus is coming back tomorrow, what would you different, do differently than you do today? And if there's something, then do it. That's what you should be doing. Well, no. No. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't know for a fact that Jesus is coming back to tomorrow. If I knew for a fact Jesus was coming back tomorrow, I'd be telling everybody I know, Jesus is coming back tomorrow. But I don't know that. I hope, I hope he does. That'd be cool. But I don't know that. What I do know is that he is Lord. What I do know is that he can save us from our sins. What I do know is that he is worthy to be served. Okay? Um, we also don't know the extent of our own lives. Now, life seems to get faster as you get older. All right. I've talked to a lot of folks who say, man, life is just speeding up. It's getting, it just seems like it's getting faster. And let me tell you, it, it really doesn't. We have the same amount of hours in the day than we did when we were little kids. Uh, the difference is, is that we have more time to compare it to. All right. Unless you're like a little kid, then you know you you don't. All right. But when you're 10 years old, five years seems like a long time because that's half your life. But when you're 50 years old, five years isn't very long at all, <laughs> okay? And so uh, it just seems like a vapor. And it's our, it's our awareness of time that should change our perspective of how we spend our time, okay? Um, now, let me clarify something right now. I'm not talking about doing more, all right? People say, well, I just feel like I could do more for the Lord. You can always do more for the Lord. There's always more things that can be done. All right? So fold that one up and put it away. What I'm talking about is what is your time dedicated to? Is my time dedicated to self? Is time dedicated to the Lord? Am I available if the Lord says, I want you to go do this? Can I, will I say, yes, Lord? Or will I say, no, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a little too busy? All right? Uh, let's take a look at Psalms 103. I'm going to start in verse 13. 
It says, just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord is compassion on those that fear him. For he knows our frame. He's mindful that we're but dust. As for man, his days are like the grass, as a flower in the field, so he flourishes. Then the wind has passed over it, and it's no more. And its place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to the children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. Understand something, God knows your frame. He knows you better than you know yourself. And sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow because God will, will come to us and we'll be praying and it will say, I want you to do this. We say, but God, I can't do that. And he says, well, yes, you can. Because he knows us better than we know ourselves. All right? And he only requires that which his will for you demands. Okay? And he, what he demands of us prepares us for eternity. Okay? He wants us to serve him. Now, jump over to Acts chapter 17. It's interesting, while you're turning there, over the years I've, I've met a lot of folks who will say things like, Lord, I'll, I'll do whatever you want to do. I'll, I'll serve you. I'll go wherever you want to go. And, until someone tells them, hey, this, <laughs> Lord, this is where I want you to go. And they go, uh-uh, well, no, I'm not going to do that. All right? This morning what I want us to do is I want us to just do a little soul searching and say, okay, where, where is my perspective? Where is my, my uh, time management uh, going towards, all right? Now, some people will say, well, that, does that mean that I can never uh, uh, go, go fishing or I can never go, go shopping or I can never do this or that? I can never play golf? Yes. No, no, you can play. <laughs> if you... No, it, it, it doesn't mean those things at all. But what it does mean is that we do it with God's kingdom in mind. I know a lot of folk that, you know, uh, their best influence for the kingdom of God is with a fishing pole in their hand. And they help folks come to the Lord. And they help folks work through issues of life. I know folks who can do that on a golf course or who can do that while they're, they're sowing or where they can do that while they're gardening. It's not an issue of uh, not doing things. It's an issue of doing things with God's kingdom in mind. And allowing him to use you in the things that you do. All right? Um, okay, over in Acts 17, in verse 24, it says, The God, now he, Paul's, to, he's, 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 he's in Athens, he sees all these different idols, there's one marked to the unknown God, and he, he takes advantage of what he has to work with. Okay? All right? Keep that thought in mind. He's taking advantage of what he has to work with. He says, Hey, this unknown God, this is what I'm going to be talking about here. He says, the God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all people life and breath and all things. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and boundaries of their habitation that they would seek God, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, even as some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or an image formed by the art and thought of man, Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Okay. There, there's a couple things here. All right. Number one, God doesn't, 
dwell in, in, in temples and things made in hands, all right? There's, you, you don't have to make something for him to dwell in. It's you, all right? It's you. And he wants to manifest himself through you and I. He wants to touch people through you and I. We are his body, okay? We're the body of Christ. Yes, I, yeah, I, um, I could get rid of my inner cat to go chase that, you know? <laughs> Some of you are thinking, what in the world is he talking about? I'll, I, come see me afterwards if you really want to know, okay? But our lives, okay, have boundaries. There is a time when your life began there's a time when your life on earth will end. And in the meantime, between that beginning and ending, and in the confines of that boundary, we're to seek God. We're to, not only are we to seek Him, we're to find Him. And He's not hiding from, from any one of us. And once we find Him, we repent, we become what we refer to as being saved, and then we go on to serving him. And how we best serve God is by helping others to come to him. And sometimes that manifests itself from maybe inviting someone to church or just going out and having a meal with someone or taking them fishing or taking them golfing, if that's your thing, you know, or, or taking them uh, just spending time gardening with them. And just having conversations so that you can tell them about the Lord. Because the Bible says, how are they going to hear unless somebody tells them? Well, there you are. And when I say there you are, I mean there you are. Amen. You got kids? Hey, you got somebody to teach. You got grandkids? You got somebody to teach. Amen. Amen. You're, you're, you're one of the greatest influences in their lives. Take advantage of it. Okay? Um, over in 2 Peter chapter 3, let's take a look at that. Talking about judgment. We're going to start in verse 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. And the earth and its works will be burned up. Okay, that's going to happen. All right? It's going to come as a thief. Now, there's a lot of folks with charts and graphs, and they've attached dates to it and all that other stuff, and they have been very consistent in it. They've been consistently wrong. Okay? Uh, the Bible says it'll come, he'll come like a thief. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you be in holy conduct and godliness? If I believe that there is a judgment day coming, if I believe that God is going to destroy the, the earth, how should I live? Well, the Bible says I should live in holiness. I should live with, with godly conduct. Why? Because our lives matter. Our lives matter a lot. And you have a lot more influence than you realize. And uh, the last thing you want to have happen is to stand before God and see someone go into perdition and have them look at you and say, why didn't you say anything to me? Now that's not to put condemnation on anyone. But understand something, you have influence. Take advantage of that. It says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, uh, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent. That means be active, be, be focused on this. Uh, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. Judgment is coming. It is. All right. Uh, whether you're a pre trib, post trib, mid trib, no trib, whatever, it ain't going to change the fact judgment's still coming. And we have 
a opportunity to prepare ourselves by holy conduct and holy living. All right, and that's how we, we influence other people uh, for the Lord. I'm not talking about a self-righteousness. I'm talking about a God-righteousness. Okay. Um, jump over to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 8. Now, the whole, the whole issue he's talking about is being an imitator of the Lord. In verse 8 it says, But you were formerly darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. All right? How many of y'all were formerly darkness? How many are darkness right now? <laughs> okay, I'm not right. Okay, we were formerly walking in darkness. We talked about this last week. He's translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. All right? Now we are children of light. What does he say next? Walk as children of light. If you are a Christian, if Jesus is your Savior, walk like it, act like it. Okay? Um, that's not unreasonable. Okay? Uh, Paul said in Romans, I believe it's Romans 12 or 16, uh, submit yourself to God as your reasonable service. All right? It's, it's your reasonable service to give yourself over to the Lord. Okay? Um, for the fruit of light consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth trying to learn what's pleasing to the Lord your Christian walk is, is just that it's a, it's a walk you're learning, you're growing you're continually uh, changing if you want to call that because you're learning what's pleasing to the Lord we have habits and we have things that we used to do and now we've said I'm not that person anymore I'm walking with the Lord and as we walk through there we say well you know what I've, I've kind of learned that God's not really too thrilled with this part of my life so we change that we get rid of it we find out that God really likes this part of my life so well we press more maybe press more into that but we learn we learn through our relationship with him we learn from the empowering and the anointing of the Holy Spirit working in our lives what's pleasing to Him. And He tells us in His Word, and as we commit ourselves uh, to His Word, we learn more about what's pleasing to the Lord. That's why the enemy works really hard to keep us from Bible study, from reading God's Word. He tries to keep us from fellowshipping with other believers. He tries to keep us from prayer. Because in all those things, it keeps us ignorant. And God has not called us to be ignorant. He called us to be enlightened. Okay? Um, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them, for it's disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done of them in secret. But all things become visible when they're exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk. Not as unwise men, but as wise. So I have to be careful, okay, how I walk. How many guys have ever seen someone, because it's, it's, you've probably never experienced this yourself, maybe they're walking and, and they don't see something and they kind of trip Maybe they fall down, or maybe they don't fall down, but they stumble really bad, and then they stop, they turn around and see if anybody saw them. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? Um, he says, be careful, because there's hazards out there. There are things that you need to be mindful of. There, are, there is an enemy out there, and we need to walk, and that we, we are paying attention to what's going on around us. Okay. Keeps you from looking foolish. Making the most of your time because the days are evil. Yeah, we live in an, in an evil time. We, there's, a, there's a lot of wickedness around us. Um, it's not necessarily any more or any less than any other time in history, uh, but just like we talked about with time, you have more of your life to compare it to, We've got more exposure to knowledge than we ever had in history. 
You can get on the computer and you can, you can get all kinds of stuff and read all kinds of things about what's going on. Some of it's actually true, okay? And so we, we need to be mindful of that. We need to make the most of our time because we live in an evil society. And we struggle with different things and, and we need to take advantage of the time while we have it, okay? Because there's gonna come a time where your influence is no more, okay? Um, now, I will say this, that you do want to live your life in such a, such a way that when you do physically die, the memory of you still promotes people to righteousness. Okay? I remember brother so-and-so, yeah, they, they was always talking about the Lord. You know what? I should ought to, you know, get my Bible out and start reading. You know, your influence can affect other people even after you're gone. Okay? That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. Verse 17, so then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now there's a lot of things that the scriptures talk about what the will of the Lord is. And it goes on and mentions a couple things afterwards. And as you go through the scriptures, you can look, and it's not hard to do a word study on it. Just say, you know, uh, look in your concordance or whatever and say, will of God. You know, see what it says. All right. That's a good place to start. All right? Well, one thing we know is the will of God that you be saved. So I, I need to make sure I'm saved. It's the will of God that we walk in holiness. Well, okay, we we'll need to walk in holiness. It's the will of God that we are sanctified. All right? Wow, well, what does that even mean? Well, that's where your dictionary comes in. All right, I encourage you when you study your Bible, have a concordance there, have a dictionary there. If you're not sure of a word, look it up. I've done uh, many Bible studies of the, over the years, and I'll ask folks, I did, do you believe that Christians should be sanctified? And they say, absolutely. I say, good, what's that mean? Uh, I don't know. Look it up. Amen? Look it up. Educate yourself. God gave you a brain, and it's a good one. All right? He gave it, not, not, it's not just a place to, to, to keep your hat, you know? It's a, it's a place to think. And that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Make the most of your time. And we make the most of our time by knowing what God's will is. Okay? Uh, I'll give you a good example. If you look at the next verse, it says, don't get drunk with wine, uh, but be filled with the Spirit. So if I'm having a bad day, all right, and everybody's made me mad. I'm mad at life. I think to myself, well, back in the day, I'd go get drunk. Well, God's word just told me that that's no longer an option if I'm going to walk in life. So now I have a choice to make. Do I do what God's word says or do I not? Do I live wisely or do I live foolishly? Well, it also means I need to be filled with the Spirit. I need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill me. Well, I, don't, I don't want to be crazy. I don't want to be one of those fanatics. I don't want to, I don't want to be weir one of those weirdos. Does it say that or not? Well, ask the Lord to fill you with the Spirit. He will. He will. Well, I don't want to be a weirdo. Good. Nobody wants you to be a weirdo. All right? <laughs> so don't be a weirdo about it. But be filled with the Spirit. Okay? Let's take a uh, left or uh, right turn, go up to Colossians chapter 4. We're going to take a look at verse 5. Conduct yourself with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, that you will know how you should respond to each person. Okay? So I need to conduct my life with wisdom, uh, not foolishness. All right? Uh, and in that, I'm going to know how to talk to folks. I need to talk to folks with graciousness. 
How many of y'all have ever seen somebody stand on a street corner and scream at people? And you go, wow, what must I do to be saved? No. Okay. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. Now, it also does not say a compromised word brings forth truth, neither. It does not say that. We need to speak the truth, but we speak the truth in love. We don't speak the truth in hatred. We don't speak the truth in condemnation. We speak the truth in love. And in that, you will have conviction. Okay? But we need to be wise and conduct ourselves properly, especially towards those who are, are not saved. Okay? And we talked about this last week. They might not like what you say, but they can't argue with your life. If your life is one of godliness, that speaks volumes. Okay? Now, it doesn't speak more than the spoken word. Okay, please understand that. Some people say, well, I just let my life be a testimony. I don't, I don't say anything at all. All they know is you're, you're a nice guy. Hopefully. Hopefully. How will they know unless somebody tells them? Okay? It doesn't mean you preach a sermon. Some people shouldn't preach a sermon. But you can tell them what Jesus is, who Jesus is and especially who he is to you. Tell them the truth of what God's word says about him. Okay. In Romans 12, 21, it says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And if you find yourself being uh, burdened by the evil that is around you, because we do, we, we, we go to work and sometimes we hear people talk and you kind of go, oh, Lord, or you go to the store, or you turn the TV on, you go, oh, it's just, when is it going to end? It will. It'll end. It'll end soon enough. But don't be overcome by that. Overcome evil with good. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, what do I do if I'm at work and somebody uh, starts telling you know, bad evil, wicked jokes. What, what do I do about that? You say, stop. <laughs> hey, you shouldn't ought to do that. Well, that's going to make me very unpopular. And? Yeah, I understand that. I've had to do that many times. Okay? I've had to do that with other believers. Well, I probably shouldn't say this. <laughs> My usual response is, well, then don't. <laughs> okay? But say it in love. And don't just say, well, then you shouldn't. Tell them why. Tell them why. Because that's just pleasing to the Lord. Okay? Years ago, I was, I was working for a company, and, and uh, we had a situation come that uh, they said, you know, well, you guys got to work on Sundays and now. And, and I went to the, our foreman. I said, well, I ain't going to be here Sunday because I'm going to be at church. He goes, well, no, you got to be here. I said, well, no, actually, I don't, <laughs> and I'm not going to be here. He goes, well, you can get fired. I said, well, that's okay. I was looking for a job, and I found this one. And, see, I had to be willing to take the consequences of it, and that's where a lot of people falter, is we say things, but we're not willing to take the consequences of it. And he says, well, why, why can't you be here? I said, well, my church is real particular about me being there on Sunday. He goes, really? He goes, why is that? I go, well, because I'm the pastor. He says, you are? What are you doing here? I says, well, my, I got two little kids, and there was little kids at the time. I said, they got a medical condition that if they don't get their treatments, they'll die. And he says, really? What's wrong with them? I said, they like to eat. <laughs> and then he said, he said you've been here for, for a week now, and you haven't told me what a dirty, rotten sinner I am? I said, well, it seems to me like you figured that part out already. I said, however, if you want to change that, I would love to sit down with you after work and tell you about our Savior and what he can do for you, okay? You have opportunity all around you, okay? And what I want us to do as a, as a, as a body of believers is to take advantage of those opportunities. It doesn't mean you're being obnoxious. Please do not be obnoxious, all right? But be truthful and be loving, okay? 
and see what the Lord will do. He wants to work in our lives. Amen? All right, let's pray about that. Okay, well, Lord, we do. We, we, we thank you. Uh, we thank you that you give us opportunity. Uh, you tell us that you want us to, to, to serve you. You want us to uh, be a witness for you. And then you provide us opportunity for that to happen. Help us to recognize it and take advantage of those opportunities. And we thank you for that. I thank you for giving us courage. Give us strength and compassion uh, for those that are, that are lost, Lord. Help us to want to see them saved. Uh, we hear a lot of folk uh, complaining about uh, things in society. Well, do you pray about those things? And then when you have opportunity, do you bring truth to those things? Or do we find ourselves just complaining? Okay. Lord, I thank you that your anointing is upon each person here this morning to make a difference in their the confines of their lives for the kingdom of God. And I just thank you for helping us with that in Jesus' name. Amen.